Age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Welcome to Jupiter at Night, episode 201, everyone. It's the internet's geekiest talk show. Yeah, the yeah. one and only. My name is Chris. I'm John, with my mic on. I'm Jeremy, with my mic on. Good job, right? Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Did we get it all? Right. Yeah. Now, uh, Jupiter, Show us. Okay. Jupiter at Night is a nice long wander down conversations and topics that people that are generally into things like comic books, sci-fi, movies, video games, retro video games in some cases. And other things. Yeah. TV, things like that, then you're going to love this show. Yes, and junk. if you're a fan, a longtime fan of our network in general, you might be familiar with an old show we had called Beer is Tasty. Mm-hmm. And we're sort of rolling in some of the old Beer is Tasty into Jupiter at night. But beer is not on my diet. No, no. We're, and we're trying to be Atkins friendly for the J- Too for the J-Man tonight. Mm-hmm. So with that said, the funk here in the middle, John, he yep. said, uh, guys, I will bring in some nice whiskey. What'd you, what'd you bring us here? I brought some Johnny Walker Green Label. Blended malt scotch whiskey. Now, Jeremy, Jeremy, this is your cue to bring up your Wikipedia page okay. and talk about the amazingness that is. I am precisely on cue. Yeah, there you go. The green label is a blended malt yes, using only four malts drawn from the four corners of Scotland. Whoa. Yeah. The intent yeah. of the blend is to deliver depth, substance, and intensity. Oh, each yeah. of the malts is selected for the blender by the blender for balance, and each one is matured for a minimum of 15 years. 15 years, and that's why it's called Green Label, because it's got that 15-year age Yeah, because after 15 years, everything grows mold. Oh, wow. So, and mold is green. So, so uh, go. yeah. we're going to be sipping on this, and we'll tell you what we think of it. Mm-hmm. Last week, I had a beer, and uh, this week, man, you know, everybody's going to ask what this is, too. Yeah, okay. I'm, well, well, of course, wait. Because they won't be watching. I forget, right? This is an audio <laughs> show, right? Yeah, I'm also just <laughs> some Red Bull, too. That's not yeah. just a Homemade huge Red thing Bull. of uh, whiskey. I do not have a problem. <laughs> yes, you do. Or I'm <laughs> firmly in the denial stage. <laughs> we've got we've got links to uh, this whiskey, including some cool uh, whiskey stones. Which yeah, is, I wanted to talk about these. Since you guys uh, listening to the audio version might not know what these are. Over at Think Geek, they have these. Uh, they call them whiskey stones, and they're just rocks filled with something that stays cold for colder for longer than ice. First of all, right. so that's cool. But also, I mean, obviously, it do not dilute your whiskey. Mm-hmm. So you put these in there to keep it nice and chilled this without is, whisking. Yeah. This is incredibly smooth. It's yeah, good. It really it's is. got some afterburn to it, but it's incredibly it's really good stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. we drink it before the wedding. You can taste the strength without having to go. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Um, now, uh, so you guys might notice that uh, Brian isn't here with us tonight. He is out sick, unfortunately. Uh, but to kind of help pick up the slack later in the episode when we get to Torchwood, Mars Base from Cybite's going to Skype in. Isn't her name like Heather or something? Yep, Heather from Cybite. And, Thank uh, you, Heather Mars Base. Yeah, <laughs> and so she'll chat with Torchwood because uh, hopefully you got a chance to watch that at home. Why don't we talk, our, our shortest uh, area of the show probably today is our gaming segment. Okay. And our, our movie segment is nuts with like Transformers 3. Yeah, and, yeah, a lot of movie news. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Star Fox. Star Fox, well, they're calling it Star Fox 64 in 3D. Yeah, so this is a redux of the, the same version you can get for the Nintendo 64, mm-hmm. but with a few extra new features t- uh, thrown in just because right. it's like on 3DS. Right? Yeah. Yeah, well, and you know, mm-hmm. with, and they're throwing in 3D. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's 3D. Yeah. Now, there's apparently some sort of multiplayer aspect to this. At least I, I see one of the screenshots uh, in the link that's in our show notes seems to indicate that there's some multiplayer. Well, there's multiplayer in 64. But I think this includes, like, the camera yeah. uh, from your 3DS, so you can see yeah, your yeah. friends' here, faces. I, oh, I got a shot of it here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, kind of cool. Kind mm-hmm. of a neat concept. Yeah. Something you can't really yeah, do on a console. They look like they're from easily. classic Nintendo. These <laughs> yeah. Faces. Oh, the, the graphics on this are, are very classic. And yeah. by classic, I mean awful. You think that's why they but put it's still the, a great game. You think that's why they put the moniker of 64 on there? It's like, look, you so. guys have to lower your standards because it's... Because <laughs> if they just called it Star <laughs> right. Fox 3DS, then people, I think, would have been expecting something uh-huh. more. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Let's so nose remake. Well, they did the same thing with Mario before it was 3D. I think this mm-hmm. whiskey's making my nose itch. Whoa. I don't really have much to say on it, but I just thought it was interesting because um, absolutely... Very hardcore Super Nintendo. I'm surprised Star Fox. I had that much to say about it. I never even liked Star Fox. I loved Star Fox. I thought really, it was great. J-Man. I, yeah. I hated that stupid frog guy. Yeah, <laughs> always getting into trouble. That guy and should then he's not always, be allowed to fly a plane. And then he's always trying to make it your fault. You know, it's yeah. kind of, it's like, yeah, hey, sh- me, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a shame that Brian isn't here because yeah. I know he even has like a a Star Fox stand up. Yeah, right. Like yeah. thing. Yeah, he does. He's room. got he's got uh, 
maybe a life size. I don't know. For me, Fox's actual yeah, height. Yeah, for uh, me, seems to be on yeah. the uh, on the Super Nintendo. Star Fox was the best way to get my speed fix. That yeah. was like the fast game for the Super Nintendo. It's like an arcade Oh no, there's title. a what is it? Was it F Zero? Was that the one? Oh, you're oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's speed fix. Yeah, yeah, that's good call. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, so, have uh, has everyone everyone here at the table gotten to play L.A. Noir? Beat it. No, I have not. Okay, I've only played a little bit, and then mm -hmm. I watched Jeremy play some. I played right. some on the live stream a couple weeks back because one of our viewers actually bought it for me. Thank you, Pure Cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Johnny, just as somebody who hasn't played it, what have you picked up from the, the great? I know it's kind of an open world interrogation uh, scene, kind of in the LA Confidential times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's actually very mm -hmm. uh, story driven. It's not. It's more reading and dialogue and and many which reviewers. Is, which sounds great to me. Like it's and it's got great reviews. Many reviewers out reviews. there have called it less of a video game and more of an interactive novel. Yeah, of, which I an, like. An is it, it's yeah. like novel. it's like our our current modern day really well done quick time event thing. Uh -huh. So it's kind of yeah. like a uh, heavy rain to it. To an extent, where yeah, it's probably kind of like you're falling along, yeah. changing it. Yeah, slightly. but with a big difference in that the mm -hmm. reviewers actually like this game. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, right. and the world, I mean, let's just say this: the 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 1940s or whatever it is world that it takes place. I don't even know if it's that late, 37, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, is 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 alive. It is right. detailed. It is textured. It well, is. Well, and the mm -hmm. the guys at Team Bondi, the the developers that made this um, uh, under Rockstar, actually went and got like authentic pictures yeah. of LA from the time. Oh, yeah. And they used... Most uh, of the, like, sign frontage and everything. Just is the still screenshots I've seen alone just show the detail and the yeah. time put in. They use real actors, too, to do the face animation and stuff. So yeah. here's the news, though. Uh, Rockstar announced it's coming to the to, to the PC this fall. That is awesome for that a couple cool. reasons. Um, one, this is probably the fastest turnaround we've ever seen of a Rockstar game come to the PC. Yeah. Yeah, it normally takes some time. Yeah, uh, we and still don't have Red some Dead. of the Grand Theft Auto. We don't have mm -hmm. we don't have Red Dead yet. We you don't. Have, and yeah, actually, you pointed this out to me, Chris. One of these articles that was an announcement that's coming. Uh, Rockstar basically said we have no plans to bring Red Dead to yeah. the con the, to the PC. The best I can figure, right. as you touched on Give it earlier, finger. is uh, a, like a different dev shop worked on a lot of LA Noir. So most of it was made by by Team Bondi. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So then it was probably just. Ready to go, out but of the gate. it is it. Well, I don't know. Some They're of the th some of the things they say make it sound a little bit like a port, like uh, developed by Rockstar. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Some they say something in here. Okay, here we go. La La Noir's robust feature customization includes keyboard remapping and gamepad func gamepad functionality to both optimize and customize performance and user experience on the desktop. Well, that's but just going to be a welcome change. Some of the controls in the Xbox version aren't that great. Oh, okay. I would really? like to change Good the to know. keys. Oh, okay. yeah. Now, uh, one of the things, J-Man, that you and I were kind of impressed with on this is that they talk about the fact that uh, they've had uh, uh, optimize and improve the uh, graphics. And I think, didn't they give an actual like number, too? Really? They increase fidelity and improve graphical enhancements. The PC version will also feature 3D support we'll keep for even greater sense of interaction and immersion. Keep this in mind. The, the Xbox... 360 for no matter how much you love it it's an old game system yeah and at is, this though. point getting those old graphics capabilities on that console to load textures quickly enough so that you can zip down yeah, a main can, it, it, rain it, road it, you have to keep now, those textures pretty low res yeah the tools now that designers are using can easily out design what the xbox is capable of right. displaying right but why wouldn't you why wouldn't you, as a development shop, design as far as you could go, as, as, as far as your, as your tools mm -hmm. will let you, and then just render down to the capability of the Xbox? Just cut it right. back until that's well, the best that money. it can be. Yeah, and you know what they yeah. probably do is they probably, exactly, they probably sit there, they do a development build, and they say, ah, you know, I think we need another couple more frames per second. All right, let's render it at this resolution. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then they, so they just, they, they're able to start at the top and then work their way down to where it's a good gameplay experience. And now when they port to a new platform, they just export to that platform's capabilities. Right. Potentially, right. I mean, if they get all the, the tweaks working, working correctly, then the PC version could look unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, the, the graphics in L.A. Noir on the Xbox are already top-notch. Yeah, yeah great. absolutely amazing. And it's it probably wouldn't come this fast except for L.A. Noir is doing great and has gotten... Yeah, know, but so did Red, Red Dead. I mean, and Grand Theft yeah, Auto 4 yeah. took forever to get on the PC. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it's capitalizing while it has momentum. I'm not sure actually what Maybe. That may be. So, uh, let's you know another side of this that I'm, I just thought about just like right now, so let me blow your minds on this All one. Right. Do it! Some of the other things that had delayed previous Rockstar versions were exclusivity rights on certain consoles. So yeah. it's possible right, yeah. that that's all that's going on. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. So they couldn't bring Good it point. to even the Xbox for a while. So maybe yeah. that's just they worked out better exclusivity yep. deals for this title. And that could be exactly what's going on with Red Dead or something. Mm -hmm. And they just don't want to say that. Mm -hmm. Though, um, you know, I guess, yeah, I guess it would probably be that means the exclusivity deal would be with Sony. Because why would Microsoft want to prevent another one of their platforms from on getting the PC? This? Yeah. 
you know, because yeah. they, they win right. either way there. Right. So that would probably mean it's a deal with Sony if that is, or, well, not Nintendo, Well, obviously. and since we're bringing up Red Dead also, I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they're really milking that thing for DLC. Yeah, uh, and it probably sells now, better on everybody, consoles. And they're going to do it for L.A. Noir. They're going to just do it for everything. Yeah. That was it's actually just part of the game now. That actually, the the DLC thing was a, was another possibility as to why you're not seeing Red Dead because they have like this whole DLC roadmap and they don't have a good way, a solid way to deliver downloadable content on demand on the PC. Mm-hmm. Whereas, of course, it is on the Xbox and they probably right. have like you know. Right. So, yeah. Uh, That's interesting. You guys want to shift gears to movies because we got a massive let's do it. movie. Let's, let's do it. All right. Okay. Let's cover uh, a story that broke this last week or so that mm-hmm. just spread across the internet rumor mill like wildfire. We talked about Green Lantern last week, didn't we? Yeah, I think we uh-huh. just mentioned it. And yeah. It, yeah. And we were like, none of us were really all yeah. that interested in seeing no. it. No. Well, so the rumor was that Green Lantern was on for a sequel already. It's already been greenlit, despite less than ideal performance in the box office. You know what? It's going to do fine internationally, though. You think? Uh, yeah, I do. I do think. I think they generally make up quite a bit of money there. It's right now by Hollywood being called somewhat disappointed by some executives in the box mm-hmm. office. We'll see. Yeah, well, there's a huge uh, second week drop off from what I read. Like it was. Yeah. It was yeah. huge. Well, now another story just came out today as I was doing the show prep, and I, I, sometimes I just follow up on some of these stories that we put in here right. earlier in the week, and I was glad I did. It says that the Green Lantern sequel may not actually happen. He says reports that Warner Brothers <laughs> no. were prepping a Green Lantern sequel may have been a bit exaggerated. A bit exaggerated as in false. Yeah, yeah. The studio <laughs> clarified yesterday that they're still waiting to see if the Lantern will warrant a sequel. Huh. The Meaning, trans- that means international box office translation. And DVD sales. Translation, yeah. the movie has yeah. to make its $200 million back. Yeah. Right. You know they're not saying, is this story there? <laughs> no, no. They don't give a crap right. about that. No kidding, right? Uh, there's a spe- How many sequels has Shrek had? Uh, <laughs> there's a, there's an That's Easter- not story. For those of you oh, who go... Uh, uh, I take it back. For those of you who go look at the uh, show notes, mm-hmm. there is an Easter egg in there for uh, what that link was called. Mm. Wow. You gotta, you gotta go to the show notes to see it. Can I just read it? Because it's funny. All right. Green Lantern gets green lit. Oh, not that. Oh. No, the... Oh. the, the, the uh, my, my update text. Oh, okay. That one you have to check yeah, the show notes yeah. for because it's not as funny. <laughs> no. Well, it's funnier than Green Lantern gets... Well, no, Whatever. that's not bad, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. pun, you know? You don't get to use that very often for movies. That's oh, pun okay. gold. Now, this one uh, kind of is on here in the spirit of old cast Blast of Toys. A little yeah. movie rumor for us. Ooh, a rumor? A little Iron Man 3 movie rumor. Iron Man uh, 3? Mm. So, uh, Don... Cheadle, is that how you yep, say it? Yep, I yep. got it. He uh, he's talked a little bit about the Avengers and Iron Man three, and even possibility of a War Machine spinoff. Why? And I mean, uh, War, War Machine spun off into its own comic, so I guess that makes yeah. a little sense. But. Yeah, he says. Well, Iron Man three is he actually calls it the Iron Man three. Well, the Iron Man three is coming back. We'll probably do that again in February, and there's talk of a War Machine spinoff, which I guess, unless I get a recast, I would probably do. <laughs> No, he sounds nice. so enthusiastic. No, it's, 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 a, it's a reference to him being, him recasting another actor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. I can't remember. yeah. Now, uh, here's the here's the thing. We've all seen actors come by and say, "I'm going to get a spinoff." I yeah. mean, the first thing that came to my mind when I read that is that sounds like George Takei talking about the Excelsior series. You think that it's his way of just putting the bug in the public ear? Still might happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I do. Or I think you know. In his mind, it seems like an amazing idea. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, there probably is talk. They're probably just putting the feelers out, see if he's interested, and then they'll fi- figure out what the demand is Various like. Various levels of love in the chat room. The best I can yeah. see happening from this is a cameo in Avengers. Seriously, he wasn't that big of a deal in Iron Man 2. I agree. And yeah. I, I wasn't well, impressed with him. he had to beat up him. Iron Man. I wasn't impressed with him as an actor in that. I've seen Don Cheadle in he's some amazing things. He's a great things. actor. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I'm going to put most of the blame on Iron Man 2. I, just, I did not care for not it. Not a great movie. All around. Yeah. All right. Now, before we get into the uh, other movie rumors and news, I wanted to I wanted to take a side deviation here and okay. talk about a concept. Let's hmm. do it. And um, conceptualize <laughs> for me. Picture Netflix, mm-hmm. where you pay it. a flat monthly fee for all the movies you can consume. Mm-hmm. That's already here. Right. But now picture it. They it, call that Netflix. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Great idea. The yep. dream is reality. Okay. Next story. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Now, what if this service applied to movie theaters? What? So Whoa. one flat rate per month, all the movies in the movie theater you could want at participating movie theaters. Well, I don't I'd, know if all the studios would go for that. Maybe. It does guarantee them a certain level of income that they can plan on on a monthly basis. Because they make money if you know show. Yeah. Just right. like Netflix makes money if you keep the DVD. Right. Yeah. Uh, Damn you, Netflix. Well, so, <laughs> so this is in the works. Uh, this is a story over at Gizmodo, and it's called Movie Pass. 
And uh, here's the uh, breakdown, gentlemen. Are you ready for this? Yes. Can I just say before you get into this, though, damn them for coming this up with this now when I do podcasts every single day. I know. When I used to not do podcasts every single know, day, right? I was watching movies every single I day. I know, right? God. I know. Amen Jeez. to that. Wake up early, Jeremy. Go to the 10 <laughs> o'clock show. Well, that's true. <laughs> 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is early. Oh, so early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Movie Pass. Check this out, guys. Here's the details. And this is actually something that's going into trial. Mm. Uh, it lets users use a smartphone app to handle all of their movie bookings. Here's the price breakdown. You ready? All right. Mm -hmm. 50 bucks a month with an additional $3 for IMAX or 3D Meh. each. And for 50 bucks a month, you get unlimited access to any movie playing at any participating theater. Huh. What do you think of that? That's only or four tickets. Or you can theater hop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Maybe this no. is to combat yeah. theater hopping. Maybe it is. I don't think it's that big a problem. Ah. That, that Chat room says too much. Well, yeah, that's, I only think like, much. that's only like three and a half tickets. How many movies? Do, I, I don't see that many movies, but I know people out there that go to... We used to see movies all the time. Then we got head kids. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, the thing is, is, if you just go at that price, if you go to mm -hmm. two movies with somebody and buy all of those tickets, that's four tickets, that's more than $50. Wait, it's gonna be, no, it's going to be limited to you, though. There's, not, there's no way they're going to let you bring your friends. That's just not going to happen. Oh, well, <laughs> like, that's true. Here's me in my entire game. Oh, oh good, right. Good point. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. So you'd have to... Okay. All right, let me, yeah, let me throw point. a curveball at you. Let me throw a curveball at you. They also have a light package. Four movies a month, 30 bucks. Four, so four, four tickets. 30 bucks, 30 bucks flat rate, four movies a month. That's a good discount if you go to all four. If what's, you go to all four. What's, what's the cost of a movie around here, would you say? Like $12, here? I think. Like, what? 14 bucks? I think probably 12 bucks. Yeah, $12 around 12 here. Okay. Mm -hmm. With another like surcharge. So for, if you, yeah. even before tax, that's 48 bucks. So you, mm -hmm. add, you add in tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a deal. Don't. That, that's a deal. That would be a deal specifically if like uh, you reviewed movies for a blog. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, well, that kind of stuff would be great. But yeah. then you can get... You need tax like write it off, right? Yeah, press pass. Uh, so uh, it's uh, here's the, either way, they're rolling it out in private beta, so they're in, there's not anything you can get unless you get invited. In San Francisco, and it includes 21 different theaters at this time, but they hope to expand to other U.S. cities throughout the summer. I was no, just going to ask 40% of theaters is the goal by the end of the summer. Now, what about oh. come January when you're watching some kind of... You know, it's just the garbage. Like, right. Yeah, January they, sucks they throw you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, uh, like... Because there's a lot of... Well, I'll give you an example. Like, Brian and Katie, before they had a baby, they mm -hmm. would go to the movies. Oh, all the time. All, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Regardless. Mm -hmm. It's just that was an experience. And I think this would work. That's how he ended up mm -hmm. watching that Beverly Hills Chihuahua, wasn't it? Nothing else was out that way. Yeah, weekend. like, he just goes. Yeah. So, I think this would work for people like, for like them. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to know. Leave 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 us a comment, uh, yeah. viewers out there. It depends out there. on how much you go. And I mean, you said really that it boils down to how much free time you have. But would you make more free time if you had that pass? Would you just like, hey, you know what? I it's, have to go see a movie this weekend. Well, it's I already Tuesday paid night. For I have nothing to do. Reruns are on. Why I don't already, I just go see yeah. a movie? Yeah, I probably would end up seeing more movies. I, I probably would too. I just think, to at yeah. least try well, and get my money's I worth. I would if I didn't have a daughter. Because right. right now, there's just no time. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. I think I would be mm. more likely to go, and that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. If we have any listeners or, or viewers in the San Francisco area, does that article include a link of the actual uh, things that are involved or to the homepage of MoviePass mm -hmm. or anything like that? No, I don't know. Okay, so they're going to have to find it on their own. Yeah. We can't help them. I don't All right, know. good luck. Google MoviePass. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's talk a little. Uh, let's get our let's let's see if we can't wrap our our whiskeyed up brains around this story. All right. This one confused me. This one is very confusing. I think we might need the chat room to help us here. Oh, uh, they changed the picture. I was just reading this article earlier. It had a different picture. So uh, this was put in here by Brian, uh -huh. and uh, we're gonna give an honorable mention. But did you guys know there's a movie coming up called Prometheus, and it's a, a quasi. It's a pro. It's a quasi prequel to Aliens. Right. Well, because you can't do a real prequel to Alien because... You, you, no, they, the first time they... Well... Right. Alien was the first time that they met them. Alien. Yeah. What? No, aren't they going on a, like... No, there's a rescue, a rescue call. Mission. There's a rescue oh, call. Oh, Mars Base has the uh, yeah. splash.moviepass.com. Nice. The, uh, no, because they're, they're, they're on a rescue call. So they're there and everybody's So somebody there. else might have encountered the aliens Yeah, that's before. what it was originally going to do because there's, there's uh, some shot... It's been a while since I've seen it, but where they, they find somebody who's dead. And well, there's a shot in the movie, or maybe it's the director's cut or something, mm -hmm. where they come across that ancient alien that's all like strapped into the uh, to the ship, having some problems. Yeah, well, it's a yeah. skeleton. It, mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. it's a dead. It, so it's a dead. Problems over, but they were right. Bad. He had problems, yeah. Yeah. but they come across that. Now, some of the shots that they've been putting in these stories on Chud, which is where they, we pulled up these articles, they look like the concept art for that that alien, that alien um, skeleton, mm -hmm. or that alien part of the ship. Well, so, so a prequel to Aliens would be pretty awesome, actually. That was one thing, because I'd kind of, 
as I love the first two. Uh, mm. And I actually don't even mind some of the other ones. Yeah. Much. No, no. I, I, I liked it all the way up to the last one, even though the last one, I know people <clears throat> yeah. didn't like it, but not, I didn't you know, like, is, like, like the first I one. I was pretty forgiving. I was, yeah. Some this is probably going to make me have to turn in my sci-fi geek card, but mm-hmm. the first Alien movie I ever saw was Alien 3. Really? And then I had to go back. I did that same thing. Oh, really? I, no. I did the same thing. Is it just oh, an man, age the thing, first maybe? two are so good. No, yeah, like, really I, just, good. Yeah. I think I watched it like on like at home or something. I think so too. I, was I think it's on television. television. Alien Three is one where she she goes to a planet, right? And, and it's uh, the penal she, colony. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one actually. Yeah, I like that. It is. It's not yeah, bad. It so and the aliens a dog hybrid. Yeah. So yeah, Josh Whedon wrote Alien, or Josh Whedon wrote Alien Four. That's that's true. That's one the one with Renona Ryder and right. Resurrection. And uh, Ron DNA. Perlman, I believe, yeah. I think. Now, you guys can probably hear I have a butt just at the, end, at yeah, the tip yeah. of my tongue about mm-hmm. this story here. So Prometheus, the red flag uh, for this panel is it's being written by a co-writer of Lost. Right. And uh, Is it uh, Carlton uh, Hughes or uh, Lindelof? It is uh, Damon Lindelof. Da- Damon Lindelof. And mm-hmm. he was just recently on the Kevin Pollack chat show. And uh, this is his quote. He says... <clears throat> It started as an alien prequel. Well, that's what everybody wanted it to be. A true prequel should essentially produce the events of the original film, but be about something entirely different, feature different characters, have entirely different theme, although it takes place in the same world. That was my fundamental feeling about what this movie wanted to be. Okay, I agree with him so far. I also do feel that this movie is the movie I would want to see as a fanboy take place in that alien universe, which precedes the events of the original Alien but is not necessarily burdened by all of the tropes of a franchise with face huggers and chest busters and all that stuff that I love. So, but it's sort of like that. Wait a second. We've okay. seen it before. Can we do something different this time? And no. this time, the movie, That's what and this time, movie. make the movie that Ridley wanted it to make. Wanted See, to now, make. now that, still that's kind of scary. It's, it's still it's, being directed by Ridley Scott. Okay. Uh, but this okay. is the guy writing it. Right. So he wants to do an alien movie that has nothing to do with, with any of the or chest things that are Some of iconic the best, yeah. of Alien. I mean, right. that's what the alien does. Yes, yeah. the best thing yeah. about the alien, and it's the freakiest thing when you see that thing up all up on that face, and you're like, that yeah, could be my face. It's the but face hugger, the chest like busting, it it's, the, it's the tongue thing. Totally with problem the, with alien. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, now, I, I have even more problems with this, because uh-oh. there's another article, if you want to show my screen here real quick, mm-hmm. that was another tease about the plot of Prometheus. Yeah. And the quote here from, again, Damon is that the journey, metaphorically, is about the challenge to the gods. NASA and the Vatican agree that it's almost mathematically impossible that we can be where we are today without having a little help along the way. Oh, no. That's what we're looking at in this film, is, and at some of Eric Van Daniken's ideas of how did we, as humans, come about. Mars, but you work for NASA, is that true? It sounds like he's trying <laughs> to make it a religious thing. To he me. is. It sounds like it's, he's trying to take the concepts they applied to Lost, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and they're trying to make... Lost in space. It, it it also smacks a little bit. I know that these guys weren't involved, but a little bit like BSG. Yeah. What? what? A little bit like the the concept yeah. behind BSG. Yeah. yeah. I, I just don't like <sighs> this at all. It it if Ridley is on board with this, this is going to taint the entire Alien franchise. Maybe. Uh, we'll I see. don't know about that. I, I Ridley being Ridley being in the, in the director's chair is the thing that kind of gives me some hope about it. Because yeah. he can still steer that. He's a decent director. Yeah, he can still steer that ship. Well, and the, okay. the whole Alien concept was his to begin with, wasn't it? And maybe Damon's just joking around. Maybe like next quote is going to be needs more Jar Jar. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, two two more little movie stories before we get into our talk about Transformers Three, you guys. Uh-huh. Uh, first one is, um, and I I really don't have much to say on this, but Jeremy, you seem to feel it was worth mentioning, mm-hmm. and Brian seemed to feel it was worth mentioning, is that uh, the Captain American advertising campaign has started taking a tonal shift. Yeah. And is now prominently featuring uh, the fact that it's it's got the American flag and it. it's making it it's going for that patriotic look now. Heroes are made in America. Yeah, and America. Uh, and, America. Uh, so far, they've kind of some people have kind of been accusing them of of avoiding that association. I wouldn't say so much avoiding as it is just trying to to make sure that they're still marketing themselves to the to an international you know, it's, audience. It's called Captain America. I know, and <laughs> yeah, it's like just embrace it. You yeah. know, once upon a time we actually talked about this a little mm-hmm. bit that the idea of an American superhero might not be all that well received these days, and fighting Nazis might not be as well received as it once was. I, mm-hmm. I recall having this conversation. I think maybe long back when the first trailer came out or something. Yeah, like that. I think you're right. I think Jamie. so too. So now in their ad campaign, they're starting to really pump up the fact that they're talking. Uh, he's like carrying an American flag. They're, I think the tagline is either that her- heroes are made in America, and I, I I do think this is interesting because they've been so. I bet that's not the ad campaign. 
internationally. Yeah, <laughs> no, probably thinking, not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they can target market that, yeah. that kind of stuff. Exactly. It does go a little bit beyond that, though. Like, uh, this, that sexy sidekick that he has in this film, the, the gal, she's British in this. And I think that they have the doctor with a German accent. So, uh, in the comic books, the original um, Captain America comic books, it was an American thing. They, huh. uh -huh. It was made in America, and 100% an American thing. And I think that they're trying to internationalize it a bit just to make sure that they can well, make money overseas. I will tell you this. El Capitan de Estados Unidos. I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I feel like <clears throat> this, you know, this movie takes place in the prime of my grandpa's generation during mm -hmm. World War II. And I think because of that, I kind of... I, I idealize isn't the right word, but I'm almost like nostalgic for that time that I would never have experienced. Yeah. And so I'm looking yeah. at this and I'm like, boy, this is the right movie for me right now to go watch. Like, I just want to go see this movie just to go live in Back this in time. world it looks for so two good. hours. I mean, just look at like, just, <laughs> just looks so good. Look at the trailer. Uh, I, I'm more excited about this, this uh, superhero movie than I have been for, yeah, for, uh, for, for a long time. Yeah. Probably yeah. since the first Iron Man. Hella for me. Exciting. Yeah. Probably, probably yeah. since the first Iron Man. Yeah. So that's, I'm really excited about this. And it also, the other thing is, is, Whereas Thor, I had a lot of red, red like, kind of like warning lights going off. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not getting that from here, even though there's like, like there's some crazy dude in a big red mask that probably should be setting <laughs> off a red. But the rest of the world <laughs> seems so amazing that I'm like I'm just sucked in. Uh, that's yeah, Hugo Weaving, by the way, in the Red mm -hmm. Skull mask. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Anderson, you know, yeah, Agent yes. Smith, yeah, yes. Agent Smith, yeah, awesome from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So, boy, I can't wait to talk about that on Jupiter Night. I know mm -hmm. we're gonna. Yeah, we will watch that movie. Although I would like to remind you of another movie that you were once really excited about and really happy that you were going to be going to see soon. What was that? Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah. Okay, well, that was an Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. And uh, and this is a superhero movie. And I, yes. do, I do recall you gave it an amazing review on one of our shows right after it came out. Me? Yeah. We all did. Yeah. We all yeah, did. I okay? <laughs> and, and the more I thought about that, oh, it makes me so embarrassed for myself <laughs> thinking about that because it was... I, I, I think I've talked about it on the show before, but I've literally had probably hour-long conversations about how horrible that movie is since that. I had you probably do a blow-by-blow blow at this point. Me. I have had, like, uh, you know, we look back at something and you start remembering it and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that wasn't really as good as I thought. And that was <laughs> me, like, I like have had, like, re re revelation moments. Uh -huh. yeah. And then the other thing is I have it on Blu-ray and I've never had the urge to put it in and watch it, but really? I've watched the older ones. Does it have you know? extras? Yeah, you the, old, the older ones are great. Yeah. Have you ever? Does it have extras or anything? Have you even watched Don't those? Know. Don't know. You, you even uh, checked? Uh, I I might have checked for the extras. That does sound like <laughs> up my alley. Now, uh, you, you know what? Uh, Shia LaBeouf might recall he was uh, he was in the movie and he also agreed with our opinion and did not really like the movie. In fact, he that, that was guy's a jerk. He was rather vocal about it. <laughs> One of the yeah. comments on this article he's talking about is Shia LaDouche. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Harrison Ford yeah. called him out. Harrison Ford yeah, called he, out. He said he was stupid. I, he said, uh, and asked, what, hey, what'd you say uh, when you responded to uh, Shyla Ford? He said, uh, I think I told him he's a beeping idiot. <laughs> As an actor, I think it's my obligation to support the film without making an ass of myself. <laughs> Shyla's ambitious. What is that? Attentive and talented. And he's learning how to deal with a situation which is very unique and difficult. I don't like yeah. your Harrison Ford impression at all. I know, I know. Yeah, no, I don't like horrible. it at all. Yeah, well, he was a little pissed and he was constipated. <laughs> yeah. um, I, what I think, I think it's funny is the language here. He's, he's learning a, to deal with a situation. He's a bleeping idiot. No, he's learning to deal with a situation which is very unique and difficult. Very unique as in a movie I starred in wasn't Diamonds. Right. Right? Isn't yeah. that kind of what he's saying? I, I, I think I, actually now that you mention it, it kind of is. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just saying. Because he, he was, he was, he no, was in I, the I first Transformers. He was kind of a golden boy for like a year or two there. Yeah. No, I was, I was referring to Ford because that's Ford's quote. No, but I know, but it goes the other way as well. Because Shia LaBeouf, up until oh, the Crystal right. Skull, really never had a movie that the critics a panned. Stinker. Right. Yeah. Right. Speaking of well, that, if he was in Transformers. They didn't really like Transformers. No, but it still did really well. Yeah. Well, better so than Kingdom Crystal Skull. Kingdom and the Crystal Skull still did fine. Yeah, uh, that that leads us though into our big movies yes. topic, and that is that the day we're recording this, Transformers Three: Dark, Dark of the Moon. Of the moon. Yeah. Yep, and right now it's sitting at a thirty-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty good, right? No, that, that's out of forty. No, yeah, man, that's uh -huh. out of a hundred. Oh, yeah, pour yourself some more whiskey, there, buddy. Hundred's a lot higher than forty. Yeah. Oh uh, no. <laughs> so uh, the review. I've only read a few reviews though, and they still they, they say it's not a good movie, but it's still better than the other ones. I have Zaylin, heard that as well. Zaylin Maru in our chat room is calling it the suck of the moon. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> have any of you in the chat room seen it yet? If so, give us a, a quick one one sentence uh, review. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's something that's kind of interesting to chew on is uh, 
James Cameron and uh, oh no, sorry, this is Shia LaBeouf. He says it's the greatest 3D film ever made. This is a direct quote wow. from Shia here. You know that guy has really got it together. It, it, He's also talking publicly about he had sex with Megan Fox uh, while she was engaged. <laughs> that bastard Brian Austin. He's on a roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, you he do seems one, like a great guy. He does one movie with her and she sleeps with him. Yeah. I now, wish. Okay. Here's what here's what he had to say about the 3D. I just I just you guys will know why I want to talk about this, even though I'm not a big 3D guy. Mm. I like how he uses the Royal Wii too when you know Shyla had nothing to do with it. Right, right, right. Mm. We took the three D cameras <laughs> out of the Avatar stages and put them on the head of a dude jumping out of a plane in Chicago <laughs> while a building is exploding. <laughs> For real. Four or five dudes, actually. It's the greatest 3D film ever made. Wow. Okay, that does sound awesome. <laughs> okay, that's a, yeah, okay. Fine, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David, Greta Shia, you got us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call, and this does, this, let's just de- let's deconstruct this thing for a second. All right, all right. You guys, you guys, are, you guys are trying to get me to believe uh-huh. that they had four or five of the world's most expensive 3D cameras just sitting around on a shutdown set. On the Avatar stage. And they walked yeah. over there and grabbed him and then yeah, jumped yeah. out of planes with and, him? No, and strapped right. him to some Nobody guy. Nobody used knees. <laughs> doesn't sound right, right? <laughs> no. So, doesn't sound right at all. Yeah. But uh, I guess this movie's supposed to be considerably... People misinformed me. <laughs> yeah. I was... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I guess this movie is supposed to have a lot more action, but let's talk about how it's done. Well, so, actually, let's talk about the action real quick okay. because there's an article on what is it? Uh, Ain't it cool news? Yeah, yeah. one yeah. of their well-known reviewers goes by the name of Quint. If you follow m- movie news, you probably know the name. He's going on record as saying that Michael Bay made the best movie ever because he got rid of all the quote-unquote stupid shit and maximized the cool ass action shit. Oh yeah, that was yeah, Ain't it cool. Yeah. yeah, the review that I read was talking about how th- th- they were saying that Michael Bay may have been actually listening to people. For once, and and the action is actually you can actually follow along with it. It's oh, not just all like not just a bunch of fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff where you're just like, if you read this, ain't it cool? I'm about a breath away from a seizure right now. Now, this ain't a cool article goes on to say that in the end, it does kind of end up just being a string of uh, yeah, of related, unrelated mm-hmm. action events kind of tied together. Yeah, right. Where the robots just disappear for a while in order to allow Shia LaBeouf mm-hmm. to get in trouble and then swing it at the last second to save the day. But I heard the racism is gone. There's not as many like pratfall stuff. Uh, I don't think there'll be as much robot peeing. Well, and anybody that's a fan of Transformers, I think, is going to get a little more something out of this because it does refer, I, I think, uh, I haven't seen it, obviously, but I think it refers more back to the War of Cybertron. Mm-hmm. So it talks more about the lore of the world, and it does a lot of Easter egg throwbacks to the yeah. original comics and the original cartoons. Yeah, it does. And well, more Transformers that you saw in those old features uh, have shown up as well. Still not supposed to be very good and uh, in fact i'll give you i'll give you a couple here and you can find more in the uh, in the show notes mm-hmm. but um there are a couple of interesting little easter eggs that they slipped into transformers 3 including uh in the movie uh, a big element is this mysterious spaceship and it's called the ark right yeah the, okay. the one that crashed on the moon yeah exactly mm-hmm. well uh if you recall back the ark is also the name of the spaceship that first brought optimus prime and the rest of the transformers to earth uh, back in the, in the, in the uh, cartoon yeah. and, and in the comic. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, one of the Transformers is voiced by Leonard Nimoy. Yes, it is. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, there's also... Um, well, let me take that a step further. I, don't, I didn't remember this until I actually read the article you're linking, but uh, Leonard Nimoy also did the voice of Galvatron in the previous Transformers movie. I didn't the, know that. The I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently. So, uh, now, have you seen the number? Oh, and Tuscan in the chat room uh, says Leonard uh, Nimoy's character. Don't look, don't look, don't no, look. No, oh, no. you looked. You totally no, looked. No, I didn't. Well, I saw it over here. Okay. I saw it on your screen, not on your screen. Tuscan says that Leonard Nimoy's character in Transformers 3 quotes Spock. I don't know exactly what he says, but... Have, uh, so, let's see. Cat Spock in the quote. Engine's asking. Now, Cat in the Engine in the chat room is a big fan of movies. And he has a, a movie blog, and he says, uh, Have you ever noticed that any robot death in any of the Transformers movies involves decapitation or face-stabbing? Well, what else are you going to do to a robot to stop them? Yeah. yeah. Plus, this is great training for the eventual robot apocalypse. The brains teach don't have people, to be there. Right. Teach people to take off the heads or stab them in the face. So opening it's night... the best move. Opening night, Transformers netted in $37.3 billion. Whoa. That was just last no, night? Last not night. billion. Oh, that's million. the... That's million. 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 This million. says the original yeah. Transformers. I don't know why I I don't know why I put in uh, but uh, I don't know why I put a B but it's an M but million. this does make it 2011 yeah. st- strongest uh, mm-hmm. I think I, makes it 2011 strongest uh, debut movie, de- movie debut which well, is that's pretty, pretty cool, cool. Yeah. yeah 
Um, well done, Transformers. I kind of, I kind of have the urge to sort of skip over some of the TV stuff unless you guys have anything of interest to talk about. Um, I just want to mention real quick. I've been watching tidbits from Fallen Skies, and I've he- been hearing good things about it, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen enough of it to do like a thorough review. I've heard really good things about I it. I will say that I watched the debut episode for about an hour and found it a little boring at that point. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe it's one of the slow burns. Are it you talking, might be. You're talking about Falling Skies? Yeah. It's gotten really good ratings. I know. Everybody seems to love it. Yeah. This I, is, uh, this is TNT's new show. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, and it's about Ryan. aliens. Noah Wiley of ER. You know, this yep. has so and many Donnie things. Darko fame. This show has so many things going for it that I should love. It's got aliens. It's yes. got sci-fi. Yeah. It's got Noah a, Wiley. It's got post-apocalyptia. Yes. It's got it's got all of these Noah things Wiley. that are just like right up my alley. And yet, I only could have watched an hour of the two-hour premiere. And well, like, it got uh, 5.9 viewers overall for its debut, and uh, which is uh, what I say. You, you just, just said 5.9. 5.9. <laughs> it would be hard to be a oh. 0.9 viewer. Oh, that was me. I've 0.9 had, viewers. I've had a little whiskey. <laughs> I'm not um, a full person. <laughs> that's the best cable premiere so far this year, and the best since TNT's Rizzle and Isles debuted last summer Isn't at 7.6. I don't even know. Uh-huh. So it's sci-fi getting a strong response on the, on the cable network. That's a good point. Sci-fi shows don't usually do that well. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a very strong showing, but it does have the support of Steven Spielberg, right? And um, somebody, oh. some big, I, I think, I think it's Steven Spielberg. Your face, really? Yep, my face. Well, is he directly involved, or is it uh, just I think his he's a support? Producer or something? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Mars Base, if you're uh, listening along, you can go ahead and join us whenever you like for our uh, chat about Torchwood. Children? I got our Skype. The Skype line is open uh, for Mars. Yeah, Torchwood, Children of Earth. But before, oh, we we're gonna need headphones to hear. Oh yeah. Look, I haven't drank as much whiskey as the rest of you. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Hey, there she is. There she is. What do you guys think of the whiskey so far? I enjoy it, but I've I am it enjoying. I'm on my second glass. I don't know if you. I'm getting a little drunk because I have not. <laughs> I've not had much booze except for the beer that I consume. This is damn good whiskey. Yeah, it's really yeah. good whiskey, and it's, it's pretty strong. What is it? It's, um, I'd be willing to, to definitely willing to call this damn good whiskey. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's 86 proof, so enjoy. It's really good stuff. Now, uh, Mars Base, I see you there on the line. Thanks for calling in. I don't not a problem. Her. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? There's a problem. I don't pretty hear good. her. Oh, I hear. I think your thing yeah. got unplugged, J Man. Oh, well, then I'll just sit here and make noise. Go fishing. No, read go lips. Read go lips. Fishing. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Uh, wait, no, it's you Hi, Jeremy. I got it. I got it. I got it, Jeremy. Sign language? Just got it. Sign language. <laughs> yes. I fixed it. Yes. I fixed it. <laughs> now, uh, here, let me get a sh- I'll get a you shot know. of Mars' face going for us, too. <laughs> so that way we've Whoa, got I've got voices in my head. Okay. There's voices. You're hearing voices, Jeremy. <laughs> now, I Sometimes also. Sometimes that's not a good sign. I want to give a special call out. I don't know. I know a few other people did this as well, but I also heard from Dr. Cause, and he's in the chat room right now. And Dr. Cause went out and picked up Torchwood Children of Earth miniseries just so we could Which, watch it. You know what? I want to say before we get into this because poor old Johnny Boy here didn't get to watch it. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm dumb and didn't do my research. No, it, it's fine because it actually <laughs> took me some time to find it as well. Children of Earth, if you go to Netflix and type in Children of Earth, you will get nothing. It's not there. Yeah. You will get Children of Men. Yeah. yeah. And now, that's yeah. not the same thing. So I have Torchwood already on my watch now. I've had it for a long time. Um, but basically, I had one night to be able to do this. and It was I rough. I didn't find it. It was so rough. I was, I was so if you guys are out there and you, you also didn't get a chance to watch it, you can go back and watch it. But I will warn you that tonight's going to be kind of spoilerific. That's why we kind of put it towards the end. In yeah. fact, uh, if you're going to tune out... Before you do, we'll tell you that the uh, the next miniseries that we're going to watch and talk about in the next uh, Jupiter at Night, so we absolutely invite you to do it as well, mm-hmm. is uh, Sherlock, the BBC series. Just season one. It's just three episodes, so yep. it's real easy watch. Critically and it's on Netflix, and we'll have a link in our show notes, right? Mr. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The other, thing, the other thing to mention about Children of Earth is if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can stream it for free on Amazon, too. Nice. Well. Cool. So, there you go. Now, uh, so uh, hello there, Mars. Welcome to uh, Jupiter at Night. Hello there, Christopher. <laughs> now, thank you for joining us, especially since Brian was out. And, uh, yeah. he Mars was is here to give us a, a feminine take. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, for people that didn't get a chance to watch it, let's, anybody, anybody want to take a stab at tell and explain what Children okay, of Earth is? Okay, I, w- I want to make a statement first. I watched this in two chunks. Okay. I watched the first three episodes one night, and then I had to goad myself into coming back to watch four and five <gasps> really Whoa. i actually found at the end of three i was bored i felt like the first three episodes could have been a single episode and instead wow. it was dragged out to three hour long add jeremy well maybe wow. a little bit but i mean think about it the how many hours did you play la noir <laughs> <laughs> but that was a different story every few minutes yeah, this, okay. the, at the end of season three if you guys recall and you you were watching along episode three uh, yeah episode three sorry is right when they dropped 
Jack off the cliff and free him from the from the carbonite <laughs> from the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we've gotten. And so that means that those first three episodes were nothing but getting the Torchwood guys in trouble, mm. getting them out of trouble. Did we spend three episodes doing that? Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. Oh. You probably watched them all in one sitting, I right? did. I did. So the Sunday we didn't do last, I right. sat down and watched them all. Now, uh, so wh- what did you think, Chris? Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. So I kind of broke mine down into episode thoughts, but... Um, I definitely, at first, now I haven't seen any Torchwood at mm. all. Mm. And, or Doctor Who. Or Doctor Who. Well, that's good then. How did you feel about the characters? Were I've you able to understand and connect with them? A little. Now, I felt like I was coming in a little midstream, but then I, I later learned that pretty much everybody except for the very core characters were essentially new for this miniseries. So, like, mm-hmm. what I was getting, character development I was getting, that was sort of the same initial character development most people were okay. getting. Uh, but I did feel a little midstreamy. I won't, I won't lie there. So that was my initial impression. I didn't feel it was slow. What about, what about you, Mars? What did you think? I was I actually did it, watched it like Jeremy did. I watched the first three uh, about midday, and then I watched them later that night. But I watched the the last two episodes later that night. So did it was kind have, of did you find it, it felt like two episodes to me. Okay. You know, two you know like a, a two parter. You know, I, like I a, actually a finale found a really long two parter. I didn't I didn't st- I I stopped to put the kids to bed. And that was it. And then I came back down. And I stopped in the middle too, mm-hmm. and then I came back down. But did you feel did, was it a chore for you to go back to it? No, I wanted to figure out. I wanted to see the ending. I was like, yeah, I, okay. far I, was, I, want, I want to see it. I was compelled, yeah. and they played a little bit with that uh, 24 element, but not like 24 does, where right. where they'll be like, <laughs> you have day to one, get this day two, you, day three. Yeah, <laughs> right. well, yeah. St- every every episode starts out with day one or day two, and then like towards the end, they'll be like, you know, we have to get this done by tomorrow. Right, that kind of a thing. We mm-hmm. are coming tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We are yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was creepy. There's a definite creepy that element. Like we want a me. pony. That was the funniest line the in the pony. entire thing. Was when two of the young girls, as their dad, who is a government official, is leaving the room, they go, Papa! And he turns around and they both say in unison, We want a pony. A pony. We, we want, want a pony. pony. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. In the British accent. Yeah. Creepy British girl yeah. gets me every time. <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of creepy, uh, the, the way they use the children in this movie... Mm. Um, I actually, honestly, got the sense of being creeped out. Yeah. Like I was really kind of like, oh, that's a little uncomfortable. Like you could kind of identify with that happening well, in real life. I kind of think mm. there Kids are elements in weird ways. Creepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just I don't know. Maybe it's being a dad. I don't know. It's something about. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, what if that happened to my kids? I think. <laughs> Mm. What if my daughter wanted a pony? Yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> oh, she will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she totally um, will. But so I, I don't, I don't know, Jay, man. I, I, I disagree. But did you feel after this? Oh yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it as a whole, as a mm-hmm. ride. And I think that if I would have watched it back to back, if I would have had that solid hour, five hour chunk or whatever right. to, to watch it back to back, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. The problem is that I stopped, and then I, and it was a several day stop. Like oh, I think days. I watched, I think I watched several. Uh, I think I watched episode one, two, and three like the night after I, I left. I think that's last a hard week. way to judge things. You know, I mean, I, I well, guess that's I mean, how it's going to be. But think know, about this. Hair. I mean, that was yeah. still yeah. less of yeah. that yeah. less yeah. than yeah. a week yeah. of a break. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's uh, if we were watching this when it actually aired, you were taking week long breaks. But it's like 24. 24 is so mm. much better when you watch it in chunks rather than week to week. A lot of modern yes. television is so much better and than lost. watched back to back. Mm-hmm. And lost. Anything serialized, I think, yeah. is, is way better that way. I'll tell you one thing. Um, and uh, Mars Base, I'd be curious to know if you caught this. Uh, w- what I noted is I often. Will when I think I'm when I'm expecting something that's action heavy and moving, and uh, I will sometimes find sort of the more character development dialogue stuff to just be sort of obnoxious, and I'm just sort of sitting here waiting my waiting to get through it. Mm-hmm. So much so that sometimes I actually stop listening to what they're saying huh. because I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm getting so focused on the fact that I just want them <laughs> to keep moving. But this time, when I stopped and listened to what they were saying, what a novel concept. <laughs> like, they were building interesting backstory without having to sit there and just come out right out and, and just spell it out for you. Like, uh, through, through just side character dialogue, I kind of gathered that Torchwood was like this really old department from 1879 yeah. mm-hmm. that was around really before modern laws existed. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that before going into this, but I was able to pick that up through side conversation. I was able to pick up that the main Didn't we talk character about that last week? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so the main character was you think the I was to us? a little conversation. Yeah, we were having yeah. character driven yeah. dialogues here right next yeah. to you and you were just ignoring us. Jeremy, I'm waiting for the action. Could you close the trap, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Mars, what did you think of sort of the side stuff that wasn't like the action y stuff? It was more like the, the uh, interaction. The side between stuff the for me was actually kinda of interesting. I'm a big Who fan. So yeah, mm-hmm. I mean my parents watched it when I was a kid, so I know some of the older stuff. Oh, I've watched that big of a Who practically fan. all of the new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh really? You know, I've seen some Torchwood. I've re- I'd filled. I'd gone ahead and filled in the st- you know the storyline for the rest of it for myself from from Wiki. Mm-hmm. So some of that was interesting to me. 
But I mean, Torchwood as a whole, if you are a big Who fan, is sort of like watching something in like the comic book universe, and it's like based around Aquaman. If he's in trouble, you're like, yeah, but Superman can come save the day. <laughs> well, he could save it in like a snap. That's so my you, question, you actually. Heart, yeah, I had this barrier to get around to go Torchwood to be like, yeah, but the doctor could come in and save the day in like two minutes. You know, he I could actually saw five hours of work in like. He has a space and time machine. There's an <laughs> intro, and I think it was the intro to the last episode, episode five, yeah. where Gwen is talking to a camcorder, and she yeah. says, "I want to know who this doctor is and where is he." Well, no, she mm. says that I understand why the doctor doesn't save us all the time because yeah. sometimes he must look at this planet and turn away in disgust. Yeah. Um, so how does that, that not does break this like universe? Oh, yeah. How does the doctor? How does the doctor? The fact that he exists in this universe, but he doesn't come and save the day. How does that not break these types of situations all the time for Torchwood? He's probably busy saving them. Yeah. Except he's got a Is this machine. literally <laughs> like... Is this? <laughs> he's got to save the whole of space and time. Yeah. He can't come and like save us every time we trip on our face. Really? It's, it's just that? And, and there's a new doctor. Yeah. yeah well, he's not he, even that new anymore. He's got a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of questionable. Okay. Goofy hair. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> um, he's now, a you, limo. The, so the, the quote, the line there about the uh, maybe he sometimes is ashamed of us or something like that. Mm. They, they, they struggle with a super creepy moral dilemma. They do. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to say it. So yeah, this is probably the biggest spoiler part of it. Yep. Mm. But uh, aliens come, and you find out that they'd been there once before, and they took some kids Twelve. with them. Yeah, 12, 12 kids. kids. Yeah. And, and can I just even step that spoiler up a notch? Sure. Uh, Captain Jack Harkness oh, right. was in charge hand. of handing those kids over to this alien race. Yeah, so oh, about, about midstream in this series, you find out that the main character you're pulling for the whole time did some really dirty ass back in the day. Mm -hmm. But they don't know why they wanted these dozen children. He's but a they, better guy now. No, in fact, at the now, same time, they were also threatened back in the day that if they didn't hand over those 12 children, they would annihilate the entire human race. So they're yeah, back. Through a big uber strain of influenza or something right oh no that was it that's right they were saving them from spanish yeah. influenza which yeah. would have wiped out like 15 percent of the world's yeah, population do the research that was bad that was 1918 i believe yeah so they're back and yep. this time they want a lot more children they want 10 percent of yep. the earth's population of the earth's children of, er, of earth's children right yeah, now pedophile aliens yeah <laughs> well horrible. so you're wondering like why do they want these aliens Right? Like, mm -hmm. what do they want? Uh -huh. and I think, let's leave that spoiler. Oh, God, but that's the creepiest thing about it. You okay. think? Okay, oh, no, no, go for it then. If no, I was just important to your point, then go no, for I it. No, I don't. I just think, no, I can just, I'll leave it at this. I think the direction they chose to take that was kind of disturbing. It, and extremely. Yeah. And, and it's not a sexy thing. No. You no. know, it's not like a pedof not a pedophilia thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess I found, my point is, I found this series making a, cheer a series of choices D d go to directions that I just didn't think they'd take it. It there. was always well, good though, isn't it? It is good. Yeah, it was every yeah, step was of the way. It was the lesser of two evils, right? It Pretty was, much. but like, do you remember at the end? Uh, sort of the guy that the guy who gets set up as the government fall guy goes home to take mm -hmm. care of his family. Mm -hmm. I did not yeah. see that coming. That whole fifth I'd episode was probably the darkest television I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. I mean, there were so many, so many moments like that that just let me go on. Well, yeah. I mean, that makes sense well, to I do. Can't wait to watch good it. lord. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I mean, there's a I'll lot of dark stuff tomorrow. that, like, really makes you, like, stop and think about, like, yourself and, like, humanity as a whole. Because how much spoilers are we giving away? Uh, <laughs> <you just> first. <laughs> I guess we won't give away some of the ultimate big ones, but you can give away some pretty... I, I mean, I went pretty far with mine. Yeah. Well, with, like, the whole Jack thing at the end. The decision he has to make. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Right? I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> uh, so, so, first of all, they... The, Something happens earlier in the series where you realize this character, their main character, is willing to, to basically sacrifice his grandson to do a test. Mm -hmm. And then and the mom figures out that's what he wanted to do, and she calls him on it. And she's mm -hmm. like, you were going to take him, and you were going to experiment on and it. And you are not going to do that, because yeah. I said so, and I'm his mama. Well, that, com that comes back later on, and yeah. the direction mm -hmm. it goes is, is really something. And then you think, oh, well, maybe X is going to happen. And he'll come run. Uh, I just don't want to say. You it. know, actually, I have to spoil <laughs> this because I want to talk about the aftermath a little, and I can't unless we tell people what happened. Okay, go so, ahead. So, um, okay. at the end, Jack has to make the choice to sacrifice his grandson to save the entire planet, and he does make that decision. And while mm -hmm. he's doing it, he yes. seems very cold about it, very calculated, very I have to do this, and it's just going to happen. And the way he, <laughs> the way the way the scene is set up is he just basically has to stand there and watch and it watch it, him yeah. die. Yeah, yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the mom has to watch it, too. Right. Yeah. Um, now, the yeah, interesting part her. of that is that at the end of the entire five-series arc, he can't deal with it. 
Mm-hmm. He, he disappears for a time. He, he can't deal with the fact that his daughter will no longer talk to him. He, he just leaves. He has to run away because he just cannot deal with the decisions that he's made in his life. Now, uh, what do you guys think about day four? They spend a considerable amount of time debating how to select the 10% of the children. What criteria oh, do we go gosh. by? Is it random, but then we don't want to select our own family? They made that exciting, though? Uh, it, or interesting, anyway? Because the, the, the way there's so much tension. Yeah. It, like, well, stopping to think about what they're talking about. They're talking about what 10% of the world's children do we write off? Yeah. Another and point how can you ones. make that kind of a decision? What Another, kind of, I mean, what a, kind of a very poignant right. part of that conversation is the fact that they kept having to correct themselves and stop saying children and start Say saying units. units. Because they kept That's having trying to have the conversation and then had mm-hmm. to objectify them in yeah. order to have the conversation. Yeah. And then they bring in like, you know, they, they bring up the point that's like the government collects certain information about how certain children in the school systems perform. And so mm-hmm. they theoretically would have all of the data available to identify testing. the lowest performers in society and then select them. Mm-hmm. And or do you go random? Or do you go pseudo-random? That way politicians' children don't get selected, you know. And so they have to sit yeah. there and they have to figure this but out. But then they take it even a step further. And when they do choose that those low-performing, low-income families are the ones that get chosen, they actually have a connection through one of the Torchwood characters to one of those families and one of those neighborhoods yeah. that's a low-performer, mm-hmm. right. a low-hanging fruit. Right. And then you get to actually see the action taking place and see that not only the, the actual people dealing with it and the soldiers dealing yeah. with it, but also the local yeah. law enforcement dealing mm-hmm. with it mm-hmm. and... This and the soldiers I, ripping kids away from mom and dad. Mom! Wow, and the you know, right. soldiers <laughs> so throwing dad at on one the point, ground. At one point, one of the local law enforcers, who I forget his name, but he's an actual character oh, you yeah. get to know, he, he pulls off his bulletproof vest in his, uh, in his police attire, so drops his belt, and starts punching down, yeah. the yeah, army people. Of, uh, Gwen, he just starts the defending the people. Character. Yeah, he's a friend of the female character. Right, right. Uh, which uh, that sounds pretty awesome, you guys. <laughs> 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 it really is pretty great. I, was, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, you stop and you think about it, and you're like, you know, you like humanity as a whole has to kind of objectify these kind of things right. because you know the aliens say, you know, you lose, you know, one child every three seconds or whatever it was, and mm-hmm. you guys yeah, still seem to mind, right? You know, and it's like you watch and you're like watching the kids being led out to a field, you know, and you're realizing, all right, ten percent of the world's population is just about to go, and yet ten minutes later, when you see Jack's one child mm. die. It hits. It, it felt like it hit me a little harder, and you're like, "Wow, you know, it's like some things are just too big mm-hmm. for you to like wrap your head to around." Re- yeah, so really get the emotion around. Objectify it, and you just kind of simplify it. That's an interesting point. Yeah, actually. and actually, I think y- what you just did, Mars, is sort of defends the claim that uh, JB Viewer Forty Five was making, because I was worried it would be this. He says, "He says I don't know. It just sounds like it's trying to be an edgy Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. and th- the direction they go with stuff is." It's just, it's a whole other level of, of, of what happened. This is like, not, uh, BSG was forced. Yeah. BSG's yeah. edgy was contrived. They would invent stories halfway through a season just to make it sound like something that was controversial. This drama comes out of a situation where you could really see yourself in, and you could really see yourself potentially making the decision, and it's the decision that's the really bad really nasty one but yeah. and you could mm-hmm. almost see yourself going you know right. what i think i might think that way exactly yeah i mean in one sense it's the the needs of the many yeah you mm-hmm. know it's like the whole of the earth can be saved or annihilated based on handing over 10 percent of our kids right and then they but start, going, over 10% then they, start they bring kids. up things like population control you know if we you know if we do identify these bottom 10 percent our crime rates go down, our uh-huh. population goes down, disease goes down, we save humanity. Our, our resources increase for those that actually can make good use of them. Yeah. Wow. There's actually wow. a, there's really a note cool. that one of the guys says when they're still contemplating whether or not to agree to the aliens' terms, that he says, based on our current projections, mm-hmm. the world's population will be 9 billion by the year 2015. Mm-hmm. And losing 1 billion of that will still put us in the black, basically, by that mm-hmm. point. It's it's fascinating. It's astounding. It's heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. I cannot recommend enough. Really, yeah. Watching this. Okay, so you you totally turned around on absolutely. It. I loved it. I mean, uh, I will say you should try to watch it in one go. If yeah. You can try to watch it all at once. Yeah, or I'm at least in one it. day. Yeah, okay. or one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And make it, it okay Bring your friends like, over. Yeah, I watched a couple at lunch and then the t- two others at like with dinner. You mm-hmm. know, so I was able to go and run a couple errands there and you know, think about things in the afternoon. But it was still mm-hmm. close enough that it felt. But yeah, watching them in chunks definitely helps. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was, and I wanted to say sh- uh, shout out to the guys in the chat room who are also saying they went out and got it. Now, uh, Mars Base. Um, overall, did I didn't know? Did you give it? You gave it a thumbs up. You gave it a recommend, right? Yeah, I gave it a recommend. I, uh, no, hesitant whoa, recommend. Well, hesitant recommend. Well, if you're a big Who fan, then it it, it might be a little hard to watch Torchwood. Because you're like, right. why? Why is the Doctor Man. Who here? You're like. Why isn't the doctor here? That's honestly what I would do. I thought would would be an issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that he shows up for, actually. Well, yeah. uh, kids. Yeah. I will make the caveat then that the first two seasons of Torchwood make you more accustomed to that. True. Even because there is actually a guest spot by the doctor in one of those okay. seasons. Um, I think the finale like if he of shows season up one. For Charles Dickens. <laughs> right. Like he can show up just for some <laughs> random <laughs> ghosts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doctor Cause is a doctor. Not Cause. my favorite episode. Doctor well, Cause. Is there, a, yeah. I mean, there's crossover stuff. They're always yeah. mentioning stuff from Who or that's happened in Who, sort of very uh-huh. vaguely. I, I kind of like um, that too. You know, because then Martha I get Jones to follow. shows up. He's one of the. She's one of the Doctor's uh, companions. So yeah, yeah. You kind of see some crossover stuff. Well, and Jack, like Captain, Captain Jack like Hart. Hart like Jack is came from Who, of course. He was a part-time companion of the Doctor as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Now, Doctor Cause is a, he's a he's a hardcore Doctor Who fan. hadn't seen Torchwood, but liked the the miniseries. Great. So uh, yeah. that's cool. Now, uh, Mars, I just wanted to say thanks for calling in. And, yeah, thank uh, you very much. Now, I also we should give a plug. Everybody should check out Sidebite over at JupiterBroadcasting.com. That's the show that Heather does here with the with the J Man. I'm on that too. Yep. <laughs> I use my brains for science. They talk about the science. <laughs> All right, Heather. Well, thanks for calling in to Jupiter at night. All right, thanks for having me. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Now, uh, it's just about the end of the show, but I wanted to give one more mention to the series we're going to cover next week, and we, we invite you to watch it and uh, share, Sherlock. share your thoughts. Yep, Sherlock, season one, and I have a link in the show notes over hey, can you Amazon. zoom in on that picture real quick? Sure. Is he young? Is this Sherlock the early days? It's Sherlock now. Is this Sherlock Tree Hill? A I, new God, it looks like for the 21st century. I'll tell you. I tell you what. Mm. It looks like Sherlock Tree Hill. It really. Okay, does. I've been hearing. I've been hearing good things about this, but no, it's it's, that it's pretty much sound universally promising. loved. It looks like. I mean, there's a uh, even on Amazon. Dude, two, look at this. Five stars. Five stars. Oh, Mars actually says years. it's when Sherlock and Watson first met. Cool. That could be an interesting story. When's the last time you saw a DVD series with five stars on Amazon? I know. Seriously. So yeah, I, the internet's full of haters. Of Sherlock. Yeah. Uh, at least once. I, I've read some. Really? Some oh, yeah. Time. No, yeah. the books. Yeah, the books. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So this might be nice. This might be I've never read a Sherlock book. They're good. Some of them are kind of weird because some of them don't like really carry over. There's there's one where it's like he's trying to figure out who's abducting these people, and it turns out it's a Ku Klux Klan. And it's like the KKK, and it's like, well, that's kind of obvious, right? <laughs> it's not the Ku Klan, but it, just, it wasn't known at the time. Right. So. Oh, right. And it was in England, so... Oh, and the uh, KKK was, yeah. uh, it was uh, Sherlock American, Holmes right? Cocaine. Heroes are made in America. Yeah. That's what I said. I, uh, I have um, <laughs> a series of the old. Uh, I don't mean that. Sorry. And you can find these on archive.org. I have a um, probably a dozen or so, mm-hmm. maybe not a dozen uh, of old Sherlock Holmes movies that are now public domain. You can find them on archive.org. Right. But yeah. oh, we can take off our headphones now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. But cool. I have them on our live stream reruns They're on so occasion. So fashionable though. Our you headphones. Warm my ears up. Uh, I'm gonna drink a little more of this. I don't want to drink it all because. This is like that's my job. It's, it's something to celebrate. But any, yeah. any closing thoughts on this bad mama jam? I think it's delicious. I think it's pretty smooth. You know, I will um, actually say, give me the bottle, because I'm ready for my third glass. I, I will actually say this is like the perfect thing. You got it from a wedding for being yeah, in a wedding party. For being in a wedding, so I do want to say some of it. <laughs> this is a, okay. Then I won't have another glass. But this is like a, this is a great present. Yeah, it really was. It was this it was is very this good. is a really strong, good, full flavored whiskey mm-hmm. that doesn't hit you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. You can actually Straight. swallow it without coughing. And very, very yeah. enjoyable. And I actually regretted the fact that we used uh, ice. I strongly recommend whiskey stones. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> then it won't water it down. All right. I think I think that's I think we could put a pin in this one. Okay, okay. let's let's just put a pin pinned. in it. It's we'll pinned. Put a pin in it and call yeah. it good. And yeah. we'll hold it there until next week. Okay. So that's that wraps up this episode of Jupiter at Night. Now, this show comes out every Friday. If you're watching this in the video version, we also make it available in audio, and it's a great commuter's friend. Mm-hmm. You can subscribe yeah. to the RSS feed and get in there, but it is also available in all the different video versions you might want over at JupiterBroadcasting.com. All of them? Oh, actually, no. It's probably only... It's actually, this one's sort of... Only oh, video. busted! <laughs> a handful of video gotcha. format. Gotcha! Okay. A, a, a small selection. Yeah. A, 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 We're going to get so many letters. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you right back here next Friday. Bye. <laughs>